Okay, now coming to question number 138. It says the radius of a centrifugal bowl is 0.1 meters and it is rotating at the speed of 850 revolutions per minute. That means omega is 850 revolutions per minute and the centrifugal force developed in terms of gravitational force. We need to find the g-force. That means centrifugal force we need to express in terms of gravitational force. So g-force is equal to centrifugal force divided by gravitational force, right? So centrifugal force amara kya ho jata? that is m omega square r divided by m into acceleration due to gravity. So uh, mass would cancel from both numerator and denominator and we'll be getting omega square r by g. Now omega is 2 pi n by 60 where n is the number of revolutions per minute. That means this number of revolutions per minute is given as 850. So we can find out omega from here that means 2 pi uh, 850 by 16 will be the value of omega. We'll just have to put it over here and multiply it by 0.1. So g force will be equal to omega square that is 2 pi 850 divided by 60 a whole square multiplied by r. Value of r is given as 0.1. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. Then uh, on calculating we'll be getting the answer that is 80.68 and the answer according to the official answer key that is IIT Kharagpur ki official answer key ki according we are getting the answer within this range and so hence the correct answer. Coming to question number 140 uh, in a canning industry the total process time F0 is calculated as 3 minutes okay and if each can contains 20 spores having a decimal reduction time that means D value is given as 1.6 minutes. The probability of spoilage would be in 100 cans. That means we have to find out the probability of spoilage. The basic formula that we use to find out the probability of spoilage is 1 by R is equals to N naught whole divided by 10 to the power F by D. Where R is the number of cans that we use. N naught is the initial spore load and F is the F value and D is the D value. Now. This is the basic formula that we use in order to calculate the probability of spoilage. How this formula arrives? I mean, uh, how can we derive this formula? So for that, what we can do, the basic formula that we use for thermal processing, that is log N naught by N is equals to F by D. If we consider there are R number of cans. If we have R number of cans, then in that case, log R N naught by N r is equals to f by d we can rearrange it and write as r naught minus log r n is equals to f by d now if we consider that uh, we have one can and each can uh, if we are considering a single can and each can has only one spore remaining after the processing then in that case r into n will become one because value of R is also 1 and value of N is also 1. So this R into N becomes 1. Hence this entire term is 0. So we get log R N naught is equal to F by D. We can uh, use anti-log and 10 to the power F by D. Ho mara. And we can rearrange it and get the same formula that we have already written. That is N naught divided by 10 to the power F by D. All we need to do is put the formula, uh, put the values in this formula. So um, N0 is 20, 20 spores were initially present divided by 10 whole to the power F. That means 3 divided by 1.6. On solving this, we'll be getting uh, 1 by R key value. 1 by R key value would be 0.266. Now, if we are considering the 100 cans, then in that case, we have to multiply it by 100 and it would be 26. Point Six, six. That means the probability of spoilage uh, would be 266.67 in 100 cans, but uh, we cannot define cans in terms of decimal. So what we can do, we can uh, write it as 27. That is the nearest decimal, uh, nearest integer value to this value. So we are getting 27 cans. That means 27 out of 100 cans may spoil. That means the probability of spoilage is 26.66, which is nearly equal to 27. 
Hence, the answer would be 27. Moving ahead, we are coming uh, to the next question that is 141. Uh, match the edible oil refining stages in column one with respect uh, with their respective functions in column two. Okay, so here this is a very common gate question that appears almost every year in the last five years. So degumming, neutralization, bleaching, and winterization. We know degumming is removal of phospholipids. So the answer would be removal of phospho uh, phosphatides. That means peak option is three. Coming to neutralization, neutralization is the process that we uh, do in order to remove the free fatty acids that are present. We mix alkali in it and uh, then we neutralize the free fatty acid present in it. Hence, it is called neutralization reaction. So, option four would be the right answer. Coming to bleaching, bleaching is the removal of pigments that are present. Um, we use diatomaceous absorbent in order to remove the colored substances. So bleaching is the removal of pigments. Winterization is a method that we employ in order to remove the waxes from the oil or to separate oil into different fractions depending upon their melting points and freezing point. What we do in winterization, uh, we cool down the oil and hence it is separated into various fractions depending upon the freezing point of it. So uh, winterization is the separation of waxes. That means one. Uh, so, peak option 3, Q is option 4. So, okay, fine. This will be the answer. R2 and S1. Yeah, this will be the answer. Option C is the right answer. Moving ahead, coming to the next question. Column 1 suggests aseptic packaging, active packaging, modified atmosphere packaging, and vacuum packaging. So, uh, the options in second column are control of concentration of oxygen and CO2 inside the package, which is definitely modified atmosphere packaging because we modify the atmosphere inside the package in order to control the chemical reaction that may take place. So, modified atmospheric packaging is control of CO2 and oxygen inside the package. So, R for one hogya. Coming to create a skin tight package wall. So this is very common uh, observation in vacuum packaging. When we create vacuum, all the air inside the package is removed and hence the package skin is very tightly um, formed in, on the surface. So vacuum packaging uh, is creates a skin tight package wall. So S has two. Uh, now coming to third option that is independent sterilization of food and packaging materials and packaging under sterile environment. Yeah, we are talking about aseptic packaging because aseptic packaging may what we do, we uh, sterilize the packaging material, we sterilize the content of the uh, package and then they are packed under sterile condition together. They are combined in the sterile condition. So, uh, P is related to option 3. Coming to 4, that uh, 1 is remaining, that is option Q, that is 4, active packaging. Let's just discuss active packaging as well. So in active packaging, there makes non-passive contribution in the product development. Active packaging, as the name suggests, it participates in the uh, storage of the product, but in a non-passive manner. That means actively it participates. There are certain compounds that are actively participating and helps in preserving the uh, packet, uh, store kar rahe hote. So that means P3, Option A, B, and D can be correct. Then coming to question, uh, that means Q. Q has four. So that means uh, option A is the right answer. R is one and S is two. So option A is the right answer. Now moving ahead, we have question number 143. That is, which is not a caramel flavor producing compound. So um, the caramel flavor is responsible because... Uh, it's produced because of furans and pyrans. And because it is an MSQ question, therefore, the answer would be para-aminobenzoic acid, which has no role, almost no role in the caramel flavor. Hence, the answer is para-aminobenzoic acid. <coughs> Coming to question 144. Okay, so in this, we have to match the size reduction equipment with the method of operation that takes place in it. Starting with, we have hammer mill. In case of hammer mill, uh, impact occurs. 
we impact the food substance or the material with the help of impact uh, with the help of hammer and hence the hammer mill, mill works so that means the mode of operation in case of hammer mill would be impact so p is related to option 2 coming to burr mill <coughs> burr mill a burr mill or a burr grinder is used to grind small food products between two revolving abrasive surfaces which are separated by a distance hence in case of burr mill what we doing we are uh, applying abrasive force we are uh, uh, pressing the surface we are grinding the food products between two abrasive surfaces hence we can say the force or the uh, method of operation in case of burr mill would be attrition so q is related to option 4 coming to crushing rolls in case of crushing rolls we compress the food items or any other product between the rollers and hence compression is the mode of operation for crushing rolls so r1 and rotary knife rotary knife as the knife suggests we are cutting over here we are using cutting as the method of operation in case of rotary knife so s uh, is related to option 3 Hence, S is all related to option three. S is related to option three. R is related to option one. Hence, option A is the right answer for question one forty four. That means P is two, Q four, R one, and S three. Yeah, option A is the right answer. Now, coming to the most uh, question number one forty five. That is most commonly used refrigerant in direct immersion. Freezing of fluids. The most common that we use it is an M M C Q question. so the commonly used refrigerant is liquid nitrogen which is very common we know ki uh, all these are refrigerants like freon dichlorofluoromethane monochloride fluoromethane are refrigerants but the most commonly used uh, for direct immersion that means it freezes the food material instantly that is the liquid nitrogen and his we use it. option c is the right answer for question 145 Coming to question one forty six, that means which among the following are omega six polyunsaturated essential fatty acids? So the options are eighteen is to two linoleic acid, eighteen is to three. That means eighteen is to two means eighteen carbon which has two double bonds. Here we have eighteen carbons and it has three double bonds. Alpha linoleic acid and eighteen is to three gamma linoleic acid and twenty is to four arachidonic acid. Okay, now uh, in case of linoleic acid. we have 18 carbon and these 18 carbon are arranged in such a way that it has two uh, double bond at position 9 and position 12 so uh, the positions are calculated from the functional group that means the basic rule of nomenclature one that is first carbon second Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, tenth. That means at ninth position we have a double bond, and we have a double bond at twelfth position as well. But in order to uh, uh, the nomenclature in which omega is concerned, we have we calculate uh, we number the carbons from the end opposite to the functional group. That means we cal uh, we number the Carbon from here one, two, three, four, five, and six. That means at sixth position, first double bond occurs. So this linoleic acid is omega six fatty acid. Omega six fatty acid, and this is the MSQ question. So more than one options would be correct. So in uh, question number one forty six, option A is correct because it is omega six uh, fatty acid. Now coming to alpha linoleic acid, which has three carbons, um, which has three double bonds. starting with the side which is opposite to the functional group that means from here we we'll start the numbering from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 that means at three position we are having this first double bond so this will be omega 3 free, uh, fatty acid hence uh, it is not the right answer option b is the wrong answer coming to 18 is to 3 gamma linoleic acid which will be uh starting from the opposite end that means this is the structure for gamma linoleic acid it has the uh, three double bonds which are at the positions of 
सिक्स नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व दैट मीन्स सिक्स नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व यहाँ से विल बी स्टार्टिंग सिक्स नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व पे पोजिशन है एंड दिस यूर विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द नंबरिंग वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स दैट मीन्स एट सिक्स सो इट विल बी ओमेगा सिक्स प्री फैटी एसिड हेंस ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट एंड इन केस ऑफ अराकिडोनिक एसिड वी हैव फोर डबल बॉन्ड्स एंड दीज फोर डबल बॉन्ड्स आर प्रेजेंट एट फाइव एट इलेवन एंड फोर्टीन पोजिशन सो फोर्टीन पोजिशन इज दिस पोजिशन फ्रॉम इफ वी स्टार्ट द नंबरिंग फ्रॉम द फंक्शनल ग्रुप साइड बट इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट द नॉर्मन क्लेचर विद ओमेगा सो वी हैव टू स्टार्ट द नंबरिंग फ्रॉम दिस साइड एंड इट विल बी ओमेगा सिक्स बिकॉज इट विल बी कमिंग एट सिक्स पोजिशन हेंस ओमेगा सिक्स रैगिटोनिक एसिड इज ऑल्सो इन ओमेगा सिक्स थ्री फैटी एसिड Hence, option A, C, and D are the right answer in this case.